Napoleon Hill had a good saying. It was something my father had and passed it on to me as a good philosophy. And here's what he said. A good leader has the habit of doing more than what he gets paid for. What an incredible philosophy this is. The habit of doing more than you get paid for. It's what we call the service that you put out like seeds in the ground that doesn't bring the harvest immediately, but the harvest is yet to come. It's called like putting out the capital in capitalism. Uh, doing more than you get paid for means that you're getting ready for the next move up. Because if you do more than you get paid for, you've made an investment. Uh, the average person might think if I do more than the company requires, uh, you know, then they're ripping me off. You know, I'm not getting paid for that extra time, that extra attention. But you must not view it that way. You must say I'm getting there a little earlier, staying a little later as an investment in my own personal future because I want that kind of reputation. I want that kind of philosophy to work in my life. Do more than you get paid for. And this philosophy works incredibly well in Herbalife. You make the Herbalife sale of the Herbalife products. Now you must do more than you've gotten paid for. Right? They've got the product, you've got the money. But you can't stop your investment there. Now you must develop the investment in time, effort, and energy in turning that new customer into a testimonial. And sometimes that's the most difficult work, the work after the sale. Because the sale might be fairly easy. Someone says, hey, I've been looking for this product. I need it. Here's my money. But now you've got to stay with them, make sure they don't just buy the product, but that they use the product. And that they don't just use the product, they keep using the product. That's the work after the sale. But if you learn to make that kind of an investment and do more than you get immediately paid for, the payoff in the future can be fantastic. Because as we all know in Herbalife, what really pays off is not a sale of the product. What really pays off is a testimonial. A testimonial that gives you more sales than you can keep up with. A testimonial that takes you places you could never go by yourself, introduces you to people you'd never see on your own. That kind of investment is so powerful. So you do more than you get paid for up front. It's happened for me, making the investment. When I first started lecturing 36 years ago, I talked to high school classes, college classes, uh, service clubs, and I gave it all away. I went and talked for free. Someone said, Mr. Ohm, would you come and do this breakfast talk? I said, sure. Uh, could you do this luncheon talk for this service club? I said, of course. And all of that in the beginning was for free primarily because I'd made my fortune, you know, I didn't need the money, but um, I did it for free, but look what it's made for me by giving that kind of service in those early days. And finally it led to business and led to an enterprise. And I was giving the seminar all those years ago here in Los Angeles and Mark Hughes was in my audience. So what you don't get paid for, don't worry about that. Just render the service with the vision of the future that it'll come back multiplied if you have this kind of habit, this kind of philosophy. Next, Napoleon Hill talks about personality. You need a pleasing personality. There's many parts to your personality. One is your working personality. You know, the kind of behavior, the kind of attitude that you need, especially in the public. Some things you can kind of get by with, being a little careless, maybe in private, but in public, where it counts so much in your paycheck, it counts so much in building your business for the future, your own personality. But here's what you also must remember. You develop your personality in private so that it serves you well in the public. Sometimes we get the mistaken idea, I can be careless with just these few and be more careful when I have a thousand. But see, that doesn't work that way. Careless with a few, sure enough, that will creep into your presentation for a thousand people. Here's the best practice and the Herbalife opportunity in our marketing systems gives you the best chance to do that. Uh, the influence you have one-on-one, -on -one, that's what really counts. You say, well, I'm only talking to two people, it doesn't matter much. That's when it really matters. Because if you'll practice well there, using your personality, using your influence, 
to get someone's attention, to get them to listen, uh, to get them to participate. The kind of personality that someone says, I'd like to be around this person. Uh, they're unusual. They're not like the average person I meet on my everyday experience. That kind of personality. But you've got to practice it behind the scenes. You've got to practice it one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're effective one-on-one, one-on-three, one-on-five, one on one on I promise you, that will get you ready uh, to now perform with the kind of personality, the kind of charisma that wins people when you're in front of 500 people, 1,000 people, 5,000. So this is a good point, working on your personality. Here's the best gift you can give someone, and that's the gift of attention. Attention is so powerful. When I was a young man, I met Nelson Rockefeller, one of the richest men in America at that time. He's gone now, but he was a unique individual, ran for vice president of the United States. And I had a chance to be where he was holding a press conference. And I got close enough so that when he walked out, I had a chance to step up, right, when security was not all that severe in those days. And I had a chance to put out my hand, shake his hand, and say, Mr. Rockefeller, my name is Jim Rohn. And what I remember most was the attention he gave me. With the lights of the cameras around and everybody all around, he looked right at me and said, Jim Rohn, where are you from? I said, Idaho. He said, I really like Idaho. It's one of the f my favorite states in all of the country. And for just a few seconds, he gave me his attention, shook my hand. I'll never forget the handshake, right? One of those multi-million dollar handshakes. But I'll never forget that personal attention he gave me. Just for a few seconds, it was powerful. Made an impression on me that's lasted until this day. That's why I remembered to tell the story. So, same thing you can learn to do. Utilize your personality, utilize your influence, give people the gift of attention. Here's the rest of my list now as we finish up. Next, Napoleon Hill said a leader needs sympathy and understanding. We have to develop that early in our lives. All of our lives, we have to look at those that are less fortunate than we are those who need a helping hand, and especially now we learn to look at those who need an opportunity, those who need a change in their health, those who need a change in their life and in their lifestyle. It's this kind of sympathy and understanding that drove Mark Hughes to construct the company. It took that kind of understanding, that kind of sympathy, that kind of deep emotional feeling. Then Mark understood what it meant to be poor. He understood what it meant not to have. He understood what it meant to be short on finances, on resources. He understood what it meant to lack, you know, a full formal education. He knew all of those lacks. And instead of crying about it, he said, what I will do is change it for myself, and then I'll help other people that have the same challenge. Lack of education, lack of the money, lack of the resources, lack of good health, faced with all kinds of difficulties they can't solve. I'll get mine solved, and then I'll be strong enough and have the skills to where I can help other people. That kind of leadership quality is so powerful. That kind of understanding. Here's the next one. A leader must have, Napoleon said, a mastery of the details. How very true. All can be lost with just a couple of missing details. On the trip to the moon, everything has to work, right? There's a thousand, several thousand moving parts. There's several thousand pieces to the project of getting to the moon and coming back, and all of them have to work. You can't have 10% of them working, 90% or 80%. They've all got to work. And then there's the backup systems for something if something goes wrong to back it up. That kind of mastery of detail is so vitally important. But here's what else to remember as far as Herbalife is concerned. The drama is in the details. Someone says, you know, I lost 30 pounds. Well, 30 pounds is 30 pounds, but that's not the drama. The drama is where were you before you found Herbalife? How did you feel? What kind of circumstances? Now someone begins to give us some of the details. And then after they've lost the weight, now how they feel. Now their self-confidence has been restored. Now they feel better about themselves. The drama is in the details. But this is also important in the details of your day. 
the details of your business, uh, the details of good communication. Master the details. Good advice, Napoleon Hill. Now here's the next three. Willingness to assume full responsibility. All of us have been taught that, especially these herbal life years, to take full, 100% responsibility. Mark Hughes says, what happened to me might not have been my responsibility, but what I do about it is my full responsibility. I've had some things, some people did me wrong. In his first couple of business experiences, he was done wrong. Some people ran off with the money. He was left holding the bag. But he said, that's what happened. And I was not responsible for what happened, but I am responsible for saying to myself, now what am I gonna do about what's happened? If a hailstorm destroys the farmer's crop, he wasn't responsible for that. But his responsibility now begins when the hailstorm is over, when he asks the question of himself, what should I do now? Now that this catastrophe is over, now that the damage is done, now what should I do about it? And a philosophy I've taught all these years, it's not what happens to you that determines your future. It's what you do about what happened that determines your future. And this is a major part of it, accepting full responsibility. If you've got an organization, you're conducting meetings, and you're the leader, the responsibility ends with you. Someone else may mess up, make some mistakes, still your responsibility. Some things over which you have no control, understandable. But what you do about it now, how you fix it, the diplomacy you use, the strategy you use, that's the kind of responsibility now that depends on you. Also, you've got to be responsible for your future. Nobody's going to fix it. No one else is going to design it. No one else is going to come along and say, hey, I will make sure it all works well for you. You've got to take all the input. You've got to take all the testimonials, all the teaching, all the training, all the influence. Then you've got to have the responsibility of designing your life. You can design a life of prosperity, or you can design a life just to coast and get by. The responsibility belongs to you. Now here's the last two. Next is cooperation. One of the great things we learn in Herbalife is how to cooperate so that we take advantage of each other's ideas, we take advantage of each other's input, we take advantage of each other's enthusiasm, we take advantage of each other's testimonial and we take advantage of each other's willingness to grow. That kind of cooperation has built herbal life. In those early days, Mark got the group together. Jerry Shatanovich, Doug Stunts, the rest, and made some plans to cooperate. Said, no telling what kind of powerful meetings we can have if we work together. No telling how many people we can affect, even right away, if we work together. You do this part, you do this part, I'll do this part, we'll make it work together, and we'll get the ball rolling. There's an ancient phrase that says, if two or three agree, nothing is impossible. If they agree on the same project, if they agree on the same vision, if they agree on how to get there, I'm telling you, nothing is impossible. Nothing can stand in their way. Just two or three. What's exciting about Herbalife is now we have more than two or three. The president's team now is well populated. Even the chairman's club is growing. The millionaire team is awesome in its numbers as well as in its power. And the cooperation between all of us on the tabulator teams as distributors, home office, support staff. 15th floor, wherever we come from. If we cooperate, there's nothing we can't do. There isn't anyone we can't touch. There is no country we can't finally get to with this incredible story. Cooperation, that's why I'm here, wanting to do my part, HBN send out some ideas, give you some notes to take, something to think about and ponder, something to talk about with the people that you associate with and are building your business. That kind of cooperation is going to make this a powerful year. It'll get us to the two billion, three billion, five billion, but it'll get us to much more than just those numbers. It'll get us to a place of honor, respect, prestige, influence, feeling good about ourselves, for the hard work that we're doing, cooperating with each other. I want to cooperate with you, helping build your business. 
All of us cooperate with the support system of Herbalife. We're on our way. We will have the billions. We'll have the stories. We'll have the experiences. Now here's the last one. Napoleon Hill said, a major attribute of leadership is vision. Vision is in many parts. One, a vision for your own course to follow. A vision for you, for yourself. A vision for your financial future. A vision for your health. A vision for your wealth. A vision for you to latch on to and make something out of. A vision for your family. Because vision must now lift others as well as ourselves. Guess what our family is counting on? That we'll be able to see things that at first they cannot see. That we'll be able to look further into the future than perhaps they will be able to look. The same is true with your organization, the people that are around you. They're counting on your vision. Perhaps you've been there a little longer than they have. Maybe you've been there a lot longer than they have. And they will look to you to help them see things that they can't see in the beginning. And if you will do that, develop that attribute of leadership, I'm telling you, you'll have such a dramatic effect on your organization, it will be unbelievable. A vision for yourself, a vision for your family, a vision for your organization, a vision for the people that you're close to. The old prophet said, without vision, we die, we perish. Unless we can see into the future, life loses its meaning. Unless we can look further than just where we are at the moment, then we have no reason for faith, no reason for activity. But if we'll develop this skill beyond any other skill, I'm telling you, it will help us touch people because they'll want to be around us because we have this look into the future. Not only the short range vision of what we're going to do this week, this month, this year, but the long range vision like Mark has taking us to the five billion. You can have a vision that will take your organization into the future and bless everybody with success.